I'm going to try to explain the Hall effect. Um, so, so this is a, a picture of a, um, a conductor. It's in a magnetic field. Um, and let's, for now, let's look at there's, there's, you know, two possibilities here. Let's look at the one that we know is true, that there's, that there are negative charge carriers that move down the wire. Okay. So this is what really happens. Um, and let me just explain how it works, right? Let's suppose that we hook uh, the positive side of a battery to this side and the negative side to this side. And we all would agree that the current is flowing this way, right? We also understand um, that the electrons are actually going the other way, okay? Now, what happens is if you have a, a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, something interesting happens, and that is that, that not only is the electric field uh, forcing these electrons this way, right, okay, but the magnetic field is forcing them in a direction perpendicular to that. Let me just explain this, right? So here's our velocity, right? The electrons are moving this way. Not very fast, but they're moving that way, right? Okay, as they move that way, uh, that's, put your index finger that way. So let's do the right-hand rule. Index finger that way, right? Okay, middle finger's out of the page. So this is your middle finger. The magnetic field is out of the page. Okay, well, if I do this, my thumb is pointing up the page, but since it's an electron, of course, the force is down the page, right? Okay, so the magnetic force is actually down this page, and what happens is the bottom of this wire gets negatively charged, and the top of the wire becomes positively charged, okay? So the electron is actually forced to the bottom of the wire. Let's do that again. Index finger to the left middle finger out of the page, your thumb points up the page, but it's an electron, so the force is down, okay? Now, I could get a voltmeter, a sensitive voltmeter, attach it to the top of the wire and the bottom of the wire, and I could tell, I could tell, uh, by the way, which one, which side is positive would tell me whether the magnetic field is out of the page or into the page, right? Okay, if it's out of the page, the top will be positive and the bottom negative, and if it's into the page, I don't know what I said before, if it was out of the page, the top would be positive and the bottom would be negative. And if it's into the page, it would be the opposite, right? But I can also read the, the strength of the magnetic field by the magnitude of that voltage, okay? I can, I can, I can figure out this. So, so these, these things are actually used to measure, this Hall effect is used to measure the magnetic field. Um, and what's cool is that they're vectors. They can sense the direction of the magnetic field too, in a way, right? Um, okay. So that's, by the way, if negative charge would flow, right? Now imagine that we lived in a universe where positive charges move. We know this isn't true. You know, the protons don't move through the wire, right? They're locked up in the nucleus. But imagine that, that, that uh, we live in an antimatter universe, right? Okay. Well, now let's figure this out, right? Here's our velocity, right? The magnetic field is out of the page, right? B, so your middle finger, right? is out of the page, velocity is to the right. Okay, so I'm doing this, and I'm getting that the force on this is toward the bottom, right? And since it's a positive charge, it really is toward the bottom. Now, the bottom of the wire in this case is positively charged, right? The top of the wire is negatively charged. Notice that this is exactly the same situation, positive on the left, positive on the left, negative on the right, negative on the right. And we've got magnetic field out of the page, but the two different scenarios, positive charge carriers and negative charge carriers, lead to different charge distributions. Okay? So I tell you what, you set this situation up. If you get negative on the top, positive on the bottom, your charge carriers are positive. If you set the situation up and you get positive on the top and negative on the bottom, your charge carriers are negative. This is a way to figure it out, right? So that's kind of a cool thing. Um, by the way, this, this doesn't happen. Right, this happens, um, and we just use we don't use it now to, to rediscover that electrons move down wires. We use it to just measure magnetic field. Um, this is a picture of a Hall effect sensor. Uh, this is the um, the idea, right? So you send current this way, uh, the magnetic flux is this way, right? And the Hall voltage is that way, right? I wonder if they have it right. Do you suppose they do? The high the the Hall voltage, the Hall potential. Anyway. Um, they are really cool because uh, if this magnetic field is at some angle, the, the um, Hall voltage will be less. Um, so you can use these as vector sensors. In fact, you can get a whole array of these. They make um, they make ammeters. Let's say you have a wire like this, and the current is flowing up the wire. Those dots are the current flowing at you, right? You can actually get a Hall effect uh, ammeter 
that just reaches around this wire. And you can, if you just take a, a whole bunch of Hall effect sensors and put them in here like this, and you add up all that magnetic field, you can actually, from using Ampere's law, you can actually detect uh, the current flowing in this without actually interrupting the, the current in the wire. So you don't have to disconnect anything and put the ammeter in series. You can just clamp this thing around the, the, the wire, just like reaching out and grabbing a branch, right? You put it around the wire and uh, measure the magnetic field with that. Um, anyway, that's all I'm going to say about the Hall effect.